sister Calista Elroy was born on the 14th day of October, year 1939. American nun, nursing theorist, professor, and author, became a nursing professor at Boston College. For her educational biography, back in 1963, Calista Roy took Bachelor of Arts major in nursing from Mount St. Mary's College in LA. And in 1966, she took her master's degree in nursing in the University of California, LA. Then, in the year 1973, she took the master's in sociology. And in 1977, she took the doctorate degree in sociology in the same university where she took her master's degree. The Roy Adaptation Model While she was on her master's degree, She was challenged by Dorothy Jensen to develop a conceptual model for nursing. So when she was working as a pediatric nurse and noticed a great resiliency of children in their ability to adapt to major physical and physiological changes, she was impressed by the adaptation thus created this theory. The theory was developed in 1976. Callista's goal was to provide an interaction between the patient and to its environment that improves health, quality of life, and end-of-life care. Her theory aims to explain or define the provision of nursing science. The model sees the individual as a set of interrelated systems that maintain a balance between various stimuli. The Roy Adaptation Model is composed of four modes. The Physiological and Physical Mode, the Self-Concept Group Identity Mode, the Role Function Mode, and the Interdependence Mode. The nurse should meet the needs of the individuals through these four modes of adaptation. The first mode is the physiological and physical mode. The physiological and physical mode is the physical and chemical process in the basic need to function as a living organism. It includes oxygenation, nutrition, elimination, activity, and rest, protection, senses, fluid, and electrolytes, neurologic function, and endocrine function. The second mode is the self-concept group identity mode. The self-concept group identity mode is a positive feeling about oneself, a mix of individual's identity, beliefs, moral ethics, and spirituality. It includes body image. The third mode is the role function mode. The role function mode focuses on the primary, secondary, and tertiary roles that a person occupies in the society and knowing where they stand as a member of the society. The fourth mode is the interdependence mode. The interdependence mode focuses on the giving and receiving of love, respect, and worth in order to achieve relational integrity. This is accomplished through good communication and interpersonal relationship. So here are the classification of stimuli. The first one is the focal. The focal stimuli are the confrontation with the individual's internal and external environment or the main problem. Then, we have the contextual. The contextual stimuli are those other stimuli that contribute to the focal stimuli and affect the current situation. 
The example of the contextual stimuli are the financial and physical resources, presence or absence of support systems, clinical setting, and others. Then, the third stimuli is the residual. The residual stimuli are close factors affecting the current situation. These are beliefs, behaviors, and personal experiences. In the adaptation model, nurses are the facilitators of adaptation. The nurses promote positive adaptations by enhancing environment interactions and helping patients react positively to the stimuli. Nurses eliminate ineffective coping mechanisms and eventually lead to better outcomes. Mrs. Van is a 60-year-old female, was admitted to a palliative care unit in their hospital. She needs special assistance and she needs to be monitored. Recently, she was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer and has already metastasized up to her bones. Mrs. Van appears to be weak and thin and looks pale and dry. She complains about her difficulty in breathing. Some skin has changes and feeling of discomfort and pain in her breast. She also experiences back pain, weakening of her bones, numbness in her legs and arms. Due to Mrs. Van's condition, she was forced to limit her physical activities and also her usual routines were affected. Mrs. Van is a widow. She lives alone in her Nipa house with her dog, who she considers her only family left and whom she was with after her children decided to go and left her alone. Her three children are already grown up and has their own life. Two of them are already married and decided to live abroad while the other one is working in Manila and still hasn't come home yet after she graduated and got a job. It has been years since she last saw her grandchildren and as well as her children, but now Mrs. Van is just enjoying her own company, been busy doing her garden and been traveling alone. After she was admitted for a month, she became sad and developed depression. At night, she starts crying, thinking of her old life and the fond memories she had with her family. Mrs. Van's cancer is progressing quickly. She starts to experience severe pains and isn't able to do her daily living activities. She starts to have a hard time in feeding herself and starts to lose a lot of weight as her cancer is starting to get worse. She became an incompetent person. When her family knew about her conditions, her family wanted to let their mother have rest peacefully, which is in medical term, the family wants DNR. The family only wants to give and show all the comforts that their mother needs until the end of her life. Hello, Mrs. Van. Today, I'm going to have a check on you, okay? So, how have you been doing here? And how do you feel today, ma'am? 
As a reminder, you should take a rest, ma'am, and eat a lot of healthy foods. Hello, ma'am. Your daughter told me that you are not eating and that you have been sad and crying. Is there something bothering you, ma'am? I miss my children abroad and my grandchildren as well. I miss my pet. I miss my old life. Hmm, I'm sure they're missing you too. How about we contact them? Let's do it in a video call so you can see them on screen. I don't think so. I think they'll be too busy to answer. You know what, ma'am? I love my mom so much. Whenever she gives me a call, I always find a way to answer it, even if I'm on my duty here, and because she misses me a lot. Your family loves you so much and will surely make time for you. How about if we call them now? Really? Can we do that, nurse? Of course. Wait, I will just get your phone. Here's your phone, mom. Oh, thank you. Let me help you in using your phone, ma'am. Now let's look for their names. Let's try to call first Karil, my daughter in Canada. Then Grits with my granddaughter Kyra. They are from the U.S. Look, it's already ringing. Hmm, you must be excited. I heard you had a video chat with Ates from abroad, so how did it went? I feel so great seeing them have a successful life. I feel at ease now and happy. I can now have a peaceful rest. Assessment or Discussion the assessment phase of the nursing process, the nurse systematically considers behaviors manifested from the four adaptive modes and assess the stimuli for those behaviors, categorize them as focal, contextual, or residual stimuli. In addition, the nurse identifies the particular stimulus of the adaptation level that is integrated, compensatory, and compromise life processes that affects to adaptive or ineffective behavior. Planning. The nurse and the patient set goals to promote adaptation. It should involve the statement of behavioral outcomes of nursing care that will promote adaptation. The goal statement should designate not only the behavior to be observed, but the way the behavior will change. Implementation. The nurse decides how to best help the patient. Achieving his objectives and selecting treatments to facilitate the desired adaptation by changing, stimuli, or increasing the adaptive process. Also, the nursing intervention in this phase includes the selection of which stimuli to change. Evaluation 
this focuses on determining if the adaptive goals has been fulfilled as well as judging the effectiveness of the nursing intervention in relation to the behavior of the individual or group. Step 1. Assess the behaviors manifested from the four adaptive modes. Step 2. Assess the stimuli. Categorize them as focal, contextual, or residual. Step 3. Make a statement or nursing diagnosis of the person's adaptive state. Step 4. Set a goal to promote adaptation. Step 5. Implement interventions aimed at managing the stimuli. Step 6. Evaluate whether the adaptive goal has been met. Now here is an illustration showing of how the nursing process or the ADPI is connected to the RAMS application or the ROI 6-step nursing process. Here are the coping subsystem of RAM. The first coping subsystem of RAM is the regulator, the physiologic coping subsystem. It is a basic type of adaptive process that responds automatically through neural, chemical, and endocrine coping channels. The second coping subsystem of RAM is the cognitor, cognitive or emotic coping subsystem. It is a major coping process involving four cognitive emotive channels, perpetual and information processing, learning, judging, and emotion. The end result of successful adaptation is known as adjustment, and on the other hand, the unsuccessful attempts at adaptation are known as maladjustments, or integration of human and environment, meaning results in adaptation.